I want to ask you, what is the, you know, the, <clears throat> there's a change happening in the art market. Now. Yeah. Uh, I think NFTs are the word of the day. And I see most of what you sell here is physical art. Sure. How would having NFTs for physical art, what would it mean for your business? What would it mean? Yeah. I think that it would be, it would be a really interesting way to have access to a new clientele. I kind of see it um, in many ways like learning a new language. So it's like, uh, I'm actually currently taking Spanish classes. When I'm finished taking Spanish classes, I can access new clients. I can access clients that don't speak English, that speak Spanish. That's a whole client base. I would say the same about uh, people that have crypto wealth and would like to put that into other, you know, digital assets and stuff like this and have, uh, are interested in that area. It's like learning another language. I think that opening that door is opening new clients and clients that aren't currently involved. And so I think that whenever a gallery has an opportunity to access more clients, it's advantageous to do. And I think that when you're working in a market, like I was saying uh, earlier, in a market with so few data points where, you know, you don't have thousands and, you know, hundreds of thousands of sales and, you know, can track things and stuff like this in the same way. When you're working with so few uh, kind of data points, it's really important to be constantly uh, uh, trying to figure out where that value is. And I think that a great way of doing that is through provenance. And so, you know, if these, if you can track something in the blockchain, where it's been and, and the authenticity of that, of that piece, that's something that is going to allow it to continue to appreciate in value. So something that all galleries think about a lot is authenticity and you know, I think that there might be a more uh, robust solution than an embossed piece of paper with some signatures, but who knows? You know what I mean? I think there's, I think I'm always, I'm always excited to try to figure out what are, what are better, what are better solutions for this? You know what I mean? There must be better solutions um, than a kind of diploma-esque thing. Um, so I think that, you know, as a, as a gallery that uh, works with a lot of local talent and, and younger artists from New York and stuff like this, we're always looking to be nimble and shifting with, with markets and creating and stability for our artist markets. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's, some, it's an area that we're excited about. I think in general with, uh, with NFTs, it's like, it's very exciting for a lot of artists that have been making digital works for many years and have had very little avenue to be able to sell those works or monetize those works. So I think that uh, specifically for those artists, this is really exciting and really amazing because it's a way to finally um, make their assets liquid, make their artworks liquid. Um, I think as far as artists that are primarily creating uh, physical based work and work in a uh, more traditional studio practice, um, I think there's a large amount of interest in the art community to figure out how they can get involved even if it's not just making digital gifts or, or whatever it ends up being. So I think there's a lot of artists that would love to be involved, but don't really know because, you know, it's not like um, if an artist is making a certain type of work and, and uh, kind of researching and, and exploring a certain part of uh, a process, maybe that process doesn't actually translate into the digital form very well. And so, you know, I think that it's unfair to think that all artworks would be able to be translated, uh, but that doesn't mean that all artworks are excluded from this opportunity. And I think as a gallerist, we want to make opportunities for artists, and this would be an opportunity to be working with a new clientele. And I think that that's kind of what's most exciting for us. Uh, so our platform will provide free data about artists, whoever, we don't know who they're going to be. There are many artists, they will sell stuff, there will be data that you can query, that you can see in an easy to understand way. Uh, and we think that smart collectors and dealers, galleries can actually find opportunities in new or undiscovered, not necessarily, could be an old, older person, but undiscovered mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. And do you think this is something that would be interesting for you professionally to do that? In regards to... In regards to, to using the, the blockchain data 
to find new opportunities with new artists that might be unrepresented in this form? For a gallery to find new artists? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, I think that typically with it, as far as like from a gallery point of view, it, uh, with that, I think that we, we are always looking to um, build up the, the artists that, that we're working with and, and we always do like look to find new other things like this. I think at this point in the 21st century there, is, there are so many avenues to find artists. It's kind of like one of these things that I say with the gallery, we're always looking for artists and we're never looking for artists. So it's kind of like, we don't go and like, I sit down the team and say, hey, we need another artist, let's go look, let's hit Instagram, let's hit Nifo, let's hit whatever, you know, whatever platforms, let's hit these studios, let's go to Nana Contemporary, let's see what, you know, whatever. I think that um, this is largely a byproduct of having the luxury of having a gallery in New York. We have this luxury of having so many incredibly talented artists around us that like we really don't have to typically, um, things can happen very naturally. Like one of the last pickups that we made um, for our roster that we're really excited about is an artist we did, we, she was in a group show that we did three years ago or two years ago in Harlem um, with a bunch of Columbia MFA students and she was one of the students. Since then, she's uh, had a solo show at Steve Turner Gallery in LA, and now we're gonna have her first solo show in New York um, this uh, this coming year. So, so you know, I think like organically trying to figure out you know ways to ways to pick up artists. That's specifically for New York though, like because we have such a luxury of having so many incredibly you know, we're doing a show with six SBA MFA students in the summer. Um, it's like one of these things we can very naturally create opportunities where we can see the works and like see the studios in person and stuff like this. But that's only because we're in New York. Um, I think for a client level, people are constantly looking to uh, diversify their art portfolios into a lot of different markets. So it's not just the New York market. They're interested in buying artists from all over the world and all over the place. And so I think for that, for artists to connect with clients, this is really, really a wonderful thing. So I think that, I think we live in a day and age where there is not as much of um, an inherent gatekeeping that galleries have between client and artists anymore. And I think that we have to, as galleries, also think about what we can still be adding to this mix. Because there's still so many things that a gallery can be adding and so much value that a gallery adds to an artist's career. And, and we need to also be like, you know, nimble and understand that and like be able to be flexible. I think just the fact that we're standing in this room among all this amazing art yeah. and we can just be near yeah. it, not near an image right. of it, right. but near it, right. and not touch it. But yeah, 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 yeah. You almost smell it, it's yeah. something that is kind of rare and right. irreplaceable in many ways. Right. So I think you need, definitely you need to kind of bring this yeah. aspect of yeah, it's not any way, I know that. and I think it's also for for us as a gallery, it is about collaborating with a lot of different other other places, other people, and other avenues to sell art, right? Like a really good example of that is we collaborated with a uh, a young auction house called Greenhouse Auctions, um, owned by a friend of ours, Shlomi uh, Rabbi, very nice guy, a good friend of ours that used to work at Christie's, then momentarily Phillips and then opened his own auction house and stuff like this and one of the things we did with our artists is we brought them all onto the platform to these auctions and we said the auction price has to set you know lower so we have to have the opening bid 65% or something like this 70% something like somewhere around there so I said as the gallery what, where's the value and I said what we're going to do is we're going to protect the artists because I understand that if we're splitting it with the artists and they're making 30 something percent on a piece that they worked on this is not uh, you can't do this I said, the artists are going to make unrestricted 50% of the gallery retail price, no matter what it goes like this. I'll play around with this. I'll bet on my artists. I'll bet all day. Yeah. And, we, and we bet, and, and end of the day, all said and done, we broke it like normal. Everything got bid up, some a little bit over, some a little bit under. It all averaged out. It was fine. Something like this, that's protecting your artists and also standing in as a, as a middleman to do something nice. I think it's commendable that you did.